also have something else wrong with that image. As far as no one's picked out yet. Like the artifact? There's an artifact. You know, you can see the artifact. Good old no nose piercing right there. That's right. That's right. And lack of marker. Someone said marker too. Lack of marker. But what's happening here? Like, is this like a cone head? Like, what's going on here? He's trying to do a water, I guess. Is it angled? Is it something? Yeah. They trying to do a water? They trying to do a water. I don't know what they were trying to do there, but <laughs> it looks like they, <laughs> to me it looks like they did a Waters with an angle on it. That's a Waters with an angle on it. How do I know it's a Waters? Does anyone know how I know it's a Waters? It's how low the petrises are. They're below the maxillaries. That's the key indicator of a Waters. But how do I know it's angled? Well, we got a cone head there. Yeah, that's a really terrible movie, by the way. Don't ever watch that movie. Cone heads, that's so stupid. That's an old movie. That's an old movie. Yeah. Someone raise their hand. I thought I saw someone raise their hand. Okay. All right. So we also have something we're going to talk about here, guys. And you're probably never going to do this unless it's a trauma situation. Let's say someone comes in on a backboard. They want a skull series. And, of course, we can't flip them on a backboard. They're in a supine. We would opt for the AP, AP axial, reverse Caldwell. Why is it called reverse Caldwell? It's the reverse of a Caldwell. It's inverse to how we would do it. Similar but magnified image because PA is going to put the area of interest close to the IR and we're looking at the frontal bones primarily. We're also looking at the petrous ridges in the orbits. They're going to be further away in the AP, therefore they're going to be more highly magnified. So not ideal by any means, but in cases of trauma, that's something we can opt to do. And I want you all to pay close attention because one thing I want you all to start mastering with angles is anytime we flip the script, so to speak, we go from a PA to an AP, that's going to change the direction of the angulation. So, if I have a cephalic angulation in a PA, I'm going to have a <coughs> caudal angulation in the AP. Remember that. You're going to start seeing that more frequently. All right. So, you'll see it says supine. We should never do this other than a supine because it is superior to PA, preferably upright and standing. So, you should never be attempting this as a upright X-ray. Only supine in cases of trauma. MSP and OML will still be perpendicular to the IR, and as I said, we're reversing the angle. For a regular PA Caldwell, we're 15 degrees caudad. For an AP axial Caldwell, or reverse Caldwell, we're going to be 15 degrees cephalad. So we're inverse once again because we're flipping the patients. Cephalad also means cephalic. That's going to enter the nasion, 10 by 12 cassettes. Everything's done exactly the same. We're just doing it the reverse way and changing that angle. I think I've got a really hairy chest. <laughs> oh, oh, look, 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 it's all it's <laughs> That's all in my face. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> she she does like a hairy chest. She says she but she does. Always does. She always does. She says she loves it. <laughs> Trauma. 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 Yeah. I mean, you can put them on the table. Yes, if you slip them to the table. Probably just gonna do it portable, likely. Can't be doing that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. That's what I'm saying. I'm working smarter today. Don't work harder. Work smarter. They do. Oh, and man, you, will, you will mess your back up too. Don't ever find yourself moving a patient by yourself. It is not worth it. Trust me, because I've tried to do it a few times. About hurt, I about broke my, didn't break my back. All pulled my back. Um, Jay, question: If the CR enters the nasion, where's where are they centered in the top image? So that is the regular AP without the angle. Remember how on the last position we talked about PA and PA axial? Mm -hmm. You get the same options here. You can just do a regular AP with no angulation or AP axial for the Caldwell. So preferably, you should still do that angulation. That's going to be the better of the two. So it still enters an ASEAN, yes. Okay. All right, so what are we going to be looking at? Well, same exact structures, but you can really see how much more magnified those peaches ridges are. 
really everything's more magnified. It's less distinct, less detail, because we've got OID from the front of the face, front of the skull, towards the back. So what are we looking for? Same as PA, but the orbits will be much more magnified. This is from lateral margin of orbit to lateral margin of the temporal bone measures less on the AP than the PA because of that magnification factor. So it looks like that skull has sunglasses. But do you see how the petrous ridges are filling the entirety of the orbit? That's indicative of what? The regular perpendicular central, right? Like the regular AP skull. That is not a Caldwell. Because if it was Caldwell, we would see on the lower one third. So you're making note of that. So you identify that. So I want, so I want you to look closely. You can see that the petrises are filling the entirety of the orbits. Mm -hmm. And that shows us that is a perpendicular central ray, regular AP, versus if it was Caldwell, we'd see them in that lower one third once again. Basically, it's all this white you'll see right here. Oh. It's much more magnified than the AP. So that OID. The evaluation criteria well of course evidence of proper collimation and the side markers which that image does not have we attempt some tight collimation on the vertical axis because we are just raising the top of the head cutting off a little bit of that mandible but ideally we want just to show that we're at least trying to cut off some of the facial bones because we don't need them for the skull x-rays so we want the entire cranium without rotation or tilt you're going to notice through all the positions we're going through that's always one of the evaluation criteria you want the skull facial bones cranium whatever without rotation or tilt that's going to be equal distances from the lateral borders of the skull and the lateral borders of the orbits of course symmetric features ridges so we definitely want to see in there if they're off that tells us that the head is tilted we want that msp of the cranium aligned with the long axis of the columnate field and for the Caldwell, which is the 15 degree angle, Petrus ridges should be the lower one third. If we're doing perpendicular, they're going to fill the entire orbits like we see in this image right here. I keep repeating that because you need to know that concept. Those Petrus ridges, where are they at per position? And we're going to keep talking a lot about those Petrus ridges as we move forward to these other positions. It's all about those Petruses. I have a question. Yeah. So. Uh, how much could you collimate for this? Because we only, we're only looking for the skull, we're not really looking for the... You want to collimate on the vertical axis until you graze the top of the skull. Because if you go any further, you'll clip the top. And if we so center it, the knees here, we will get part of the mandible too. You will. Oh, yeah. On the sides, you basically just want to go up until you about reach the cheekbones of the zygoma. A little bit of light on the sides of the face. But if you clip the zygoma, it's okay, but keep in mind, if you clip the zygoma, what else are you going to clip? The parietals and the temporal, so that'd be way too close for comfort. It's close by itself. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Bless the ghost that of X ray pass. Oh, yeah. Ghost of ranking. Mm -hmm. Walked well, out. The students that didn't pass the registry. Yes. <laughs> they passed on to the other world, too. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. No. Oh, really? Yeah. And that was the second time it had happened. It happened in one room, school room, and then it happened in the, and I wasn't the only one that saw it. I used to work with some really superstitious people at TCH. They always swore there was a ghost in one of the rooms. They didn't like to use it. I used it all the time. <laughs> Yeah. I never saw it. I mean, they, I was, use, they use it. I don't believe in all that. It was just me and the other person in it. Like, it's not this one. You're slow right there. All right. Oh, brave. <laughs> <laughs> Stop here. Oh, look, they didn't knew I was coming to fuss at it. It's not the ghost. It's not the mess of me. All right. This will be the last skull position before we get on to facial bones. <laughs> your facial expression. <laughs> Was gold. We're going to talk about the AP axial town method, T O W N E. That's town, not towns. A lot of people mistakenly call it a towns with an S, but it's just a town method. Town method, yes. 
Kurogi. How would you pronounce K R O G E R with an S or just Kroger? It's Kroger without an S. Okay. But a lot of people say Kroger's. You're not the grocery store, right? Right? Yes, sir. But a lot of people basically call it Kroger's. It's actually Kroger. Yes. Write that down. It's going to be your bonus question. Okay. <laughs> at the Axial Town Method, guys, we do this, of course, to look at what bone. We talked about this a little bit in the anatomy. What's the main area of focus now? We'll look how the head, look at where the head is. What are we looking at? Occipital mostly. Occipital bone. And we're going to be projecting a certain piece of anatomy through a round hole. You remember that? What part of the sphenoid? Dorsum celli. Very good. Very good. Now, Back to either supine or cedar erect. Of course, I'm going to highlight that for you because cedar erect will be the superior way to do this. And let me tell you, that is definitely the best. It is a pain trying to get these sharp angles on the table. I've done that before. It's about a nightmare. Don't do it to yourself. That is going to be a much sharper angle, by the way. We're going to get back to that in a second. As far as the positioning goes, flex your patient's neck. In other words, bring the chin down so that the OML or the IOML is perpendicular to the IR. You do have the choice. I'm not sure how they told you in lab that you have the choice of either or. Me personally, I always use OML because I think it looks better. OML perpendicular. But you can do both. You have that, like, uh, you have that flexibility. IR should be centered at or near the foramen magnum. How do we achieve that? Well, do you remember where the centering point is on this one? Two and a half inches above the glabella. And I call this the unicorn horn position. I think Mr. Fong copied, like he uh, plagiarized my word with a mm -hmm. unicorn horn. So uh, the reason I say that is I always imagine if you were a unicorn, the horn would be coming out right there. <coughs> it sounds really silly, but I just always picture a horn coming out of somebody's head, like a unicorn horn. That's where you center. Like where your head comes to a point on the forehead. That's that two and a half to three inches above the glabella area. It's 30 degrees. I didn't like my unicorn horn analogy. I got nothing from that. And I marked it on my head. Mr. Dunn, yes. is this one 30 degrees? This is a 30 degree okay. call it at an angle, yes. Sharp angle. Correct. Correct. It is going to switch between the two. It's also why I stick to OML. I prefer the 30 degree angle because you're already elongating the skull enough. 37 just makes it really too stretched out, in my opinion. And there we go, guys. Entering approximately 2.5, but I'll say you can usually wiggle 2.5 to 3 on that, but ideally 2.5 inches above the glabella, passing to the level of the EAM. If you opt for the OML method, that's a 30 degree caudal angle. If you use the IOML, that's going to be a 37 degree caudal angle. Of the two, once again, I prefer OML. I think it looks better, gives you a much prettier image, but you do have that choice. 10 by 12 cassette still, guys, of course, collimate accordingly. Be careful on your collimation because, as you know, when you have a sharp angle on your tube, what happens to your light field? It's really stretched out, right? Have y'all been seeing that in lab? How it really distorts your beam, your, your light? So be careful on the collimation. It's going to look like you have a lot of extra light, but the way that it's going to present on the image is going to be a little bit different. Just be careful when you collimate. Make sure the top of the light is just grazing the top of that vertex, and you'll be in good shape. Don't leave a lot of light above it, but just graze the top. As long as you have light on top of the head, you're good to go on this one. So I always call this the alien head because it makes your head look like an alien's head. And y'all should remember that from the images you've looked at, but it's the alien baby head x-ray. So make no, they don't like my unicorn analogy. They don't like the alien baby head. Whether it's Friday or these jokes are just, I need to change my jokes up. <laughs> I'm fresh in the morning, man. That's mine. That's why I don't teach in the afternoons anymore. The interest? Oh. I'm sorry. Occipital bone? What looks like the, the main area of interest? Yeah. We're going to get you out of the next slide. What bone? It's occipital bone, foramen magna, dorsum cilia, foramen magna. We're going to get you out of the next slide. Stay tuned. It's occipital. Occipital. Yeah, guys, I used to teach this class in the afternoon. It was brutal. Because you're seeing it like Because for me, my energy peaks in the morning, but it goes sharply down after lunch. I'd be like struggling through some of the lectures. It was rough. It was rough. Of course, I was a new instructor too, so I didn't help. It's hard being a new teacher. 
because you're still learning the material too, trying to master it. All right, so what are we looking at? Well, of course we have the alien head there, a nice round bulbous bubble you see there. It's like a big air balloon. Yeah, yeah, I got a fake laugh on that one. All right. Thank you. That makes me feel a little better. All right. We, of course, want to see symmetric Petrus pyramids. We are still looking at the Petrus ridges, even on this x ray. Where do Petrus ridges appear on the town image? On the sides of the foramen magnum. So you got that big circle in the middle. It looks like wings coming off. Remember, I told you it looks like the snitch from Harry Potter? There's the round part and the wings. There's the wings and the snitch on the side there. So the symmetric features ridges, if you see one higher than the other, that's indicative of what, guys? The head's what? Tilted. Tilted, Tilted exactly. We also want the posterior portion of the frame and magnum, which I think it's funny, it's posterior portion, it's the only portion you can see anyway, it's on the posterior surface of the head. You also want the dorsum celli and the posterior conoid processes projected within that frame and magnum, like you guys just labeled on your tests. Also, big star of the show in red there is the occipital bone. So if we have a very serious fall at the back of our head, you're very guaranteed they're going to order this in a series because it's an easy bone to crack at the back of your head. And then the posterior portion of your parietal bones as well. Processes. Usually, I'm going to count this entire ridge right here. There's some celly just directly in the middle, back here. Now, I will go ahead and add this to your notes because I don't think this is on the slideshow. I'm not sure if it's in your book either. There is an alternative to this method as well. If, once again, let's say the patient can't be supine, they can't be AP, they should be able to. If they can't, you can do what's called the Haas method, H-A-A-S, P-A, axial, Haas method. So with that being P-A, what do you think you would do with your angulation? Cephalic. It'd be a 30 degree cephalic angle, everything else the same. So I write that down. I think that's still in the curriculum, but I'm not sure if it's in your book. Can you tell me if it is in your book? Is it in your book? Highlight that in your highlight that in your book because I don't think it's on the slideshow. H A A S, the Hosman. That's the reverse for the town method. I always feel with their names on these positions. I wish I had a Donahue method somewhere in there. I think they should do my little method with the centering of that. That's fine. I, like I used that yesterday method. and showed me like, what did you learn about? That's better than what I did this week. And I was like, oh, no, I didn't. Works, I'm telling you, it's superior. People don't believe me until they do it. Yeah, page 50. Page 50. Page 50 of your text. You want to make sure you highlight that, guys. Haas. H A A S. So, what reason do we do it? Still, it's going to be exiting the three and a half inches of the gobella. So, instead of entering, it's exiting because you're, you're backwards. All right, evaluation criteria. Of course, that good old collimation, got to have it from top to bottom, side to side, and your side marker, which all these images are failing to do on the markers. Entire crane without rotation or tilt. I told you you'd see that again. That's going to be every position we go through this chapter. How we check that equal distances from the lateral board of the skull to the lateral borders of the foramen magnum, symmetric Petrus pyramids, if you might, you'll see these words used interchangeably, Petrus portions, Petruses, Petrus pyramids, it all means the same thing, so don't let that confuse you. MSP of the cranium align with the long axis of the collimated fields, and big red there because we definitely look for that, the dorsum celli and posterior colloid processes visible within the frame and magnet. If we cannot see both, that usually means either we did not utilize the correct angle. All okay over there? We good? We either did not use the correct angle or we did not tilt the chin enough. 
which is what's the indicative of the dorsum cell and the posterior going processes not being projected through the brain and magnum. You need to know that. It's a heck of a test question if I ever heard one. Okay, one more time. Did the dorsum cell do what? If we cannot see the dorsum cell and posterior colloid processes through the foramen magnum, that's indicative of an improper angle or the head hasn't been yeah. tilted down enough. Mm. In other words, we don't have the OML perpendicular to the IR. MSR. You can't see the I does say MSR. Right? <laughs> huh? You can't see the dorsum cell or the posterior colloid processes within the foramen magnum. Yesterday I did a, um, was it L5 on a short person? On a what person? person? On a short person. Oh, like a little person? Yeah, a little person, yeah. But, you know, you didn't really notice if like, their heads are always like, like very bigger. large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would that change a little bit of the... You want to know why that is? Because did y'all know of all the parts of the body that never stop growing, the human skull never stops growing in certain aspects? No. Really? Like your forehead never stops growing, your head never stops elongating, your nose, your nose also never stops growing, I think your chin and ears as well, that all continues growing throughout your entire life. Unlike other parts of the body that stop. So when you're doing like head work on them, it's a little bit more difficult or... Well, yeah, it is, but I was going to say, in their case, it's going to look more pronounced that as well because their whole body is so much smaller, it's going to really pronounce the continued growth of the head. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, that's indicative of any yeah. positioning or rotation? Yes, or angulation, sorry, power positioning and angulation. Oh, it's 901. Let's take our break, guys. Woo! Before we get towards the SMV here, you say the last one, just mostly a bad centering, you got a slight tilt going on, no marker, pretty simple critiques. I'll go on the right. It's it's going rotated. Going up. No marker, it's rotating. Anything going on with that one? Or is that pretty perfect? Well, we have no marker. We'll throw that out. There's a tilt. Is there a tilt? Yes. How do you know there's a tilt, Johns? The, um, it shows up, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I see the mandibles are a little too towards the right. Well, the, why don't you look at the mandibles? Why don't you look at something else? Because there's something else we focus on for that tail and x-ray. Just ridges, so the left is slightly higher than the right, so we have slight tilt of the head. So really, both these are pretty good, but your biggest enemy, as I keep saying when it comes to head work, is going to be either rotation or tilt. And you always got to look to those peaches ridges as one of your big indicators. But this one right here, do we have, do we have two repeatable errors, or, or are there no errors at all? Earrings, artifacts. Yeah, that's the big elephant in the room right there, of course. We have two earrings, left and right. But this should be a good indication of what's going on as well because we see these earrings separated. What's probably going on? We got some tilt going on. Anything else wrong with it? Marker. No marker. How about too much of the facial bones? I would say we're probably not centered in the right location there. We're probably centered way too low. So we got C-spine, we got the entire middle, we got all the face. It's supposed to be a lateral skull. And remember, all we need is to the bottom of that occipital bone. So we can probably afford to center a little bit higher on that x-ray. How about these axial caldwells? Let's go to the left image first. Critique that for me. This is a 15 degree caldwell. I can confirm that based on what fact? The Petrus ridges and the markers in the anatomy. Yeah, yeah, the Petrus ridges are found where? In the lower one third. So we know it's a 15 degree Caldwell. But what's going on with this image? What's wrong with it? The marker is in some of the. The marker is in the anatomy. Did y'all see that? Big no no. Anything else? Oh, I'll look at this one. Anything else? I 
this big thing up here. I probably don't even know what that is. Huh? This patient's name and due to motion. This is an old film x-ray. I put that in there just to show y'all. So this is what we used to call a blocker. And thank your stars, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So blockers were on the film cassettes, and that's how you tag the film with the patient's name and information before you shot the x-ray. And you had to always learn, you had to learn how to position that correctly to not be in the anatomy as well, alongside the blocker. There's another thing that would get in your way. So that would be repeated because it's directly in the area that we need to visualize. Look at that letter B over here. We got a big problem with this one. Does anybody know what's wrong with this one, right? Aside from no marker and things like that. We don't even see peaches ridges at all in the eyes, correct. In fact, where are they? They're way down here. So what do you think is going on there? Their head's not tipped. It's not extended. They either angled too much, didn't angle at all, or they lifted the chin too much, or a combination of those factors. Because the peaches ridges are way too low. They're not really even the But there's also something else going on in that image. See, right. very closely. You said artifact. Where's the artifact? Uh, nose or something. That it is, is in the nose. Did y'all see that? And it weaves. It's a nose ring? It can't So that's not a nose ring. It's something in the hair. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's... Oh, for real? It is something in the hair. It's not a nose ring. What is it called? Something. Oh, God. This is going to drive me insane. Okay. How for tilt and rotation to turn on this lateral? It is telling me there is some tilt and rotation. How can we tell there's tilt and rotation? This this right, we, we don't have superimposition. We see two rows of orbital plates. We can almost see two rows of the occipital bone on the back here. Mm -hmm. Dorsum celli is elongated. It's not got that sharp little funnel shape, that little saddle shape that we're looking for. It means the patient's head tilted towards the IR. We also got multiple artifacts. These are surgical artifacts. Centering is pretty good. Collimation is pretty good. But the big issue here is that tilt is not showing the anatomy correctly on that image. Yes. On that last image, um, the stuff on the film, is that the old alternative to Dicom? Yeah, it's film. Film x-ray. So, like, that's the standard for identifying patients and all that? Yeah, you would have to always, it was called flashing a cassette. I did this a little bit whenever I was in x-ray school because one of the old hospitals that rotated there was just getting rid of their film. So it was really annoying because sometimes you, sometimes you would forget to flash the film because we were also doing CR at other locations. So I'd go to do an x-ray, I forgot to flash it, didn't have the patient info, and we'd have to repeat it because it didn't have the patient info on it. But then you also had to learn how to turn the cassette accordingly to have it miss the anatomy because you always had that rectangular shape on that image in some location. So it was another factor you had to watch out for that was just irritating to be honest. Be thankful for the technology. It wasn't a physical thing, right? It was, when you say you flashed it, you so shot it with something? Basically, what it was, imagine this was a film cassette. There'd be like a little black rectangle right here. And you would take your cassette, you have the patient's card, you would put in this machine called a flasher, and you would put the cassette in there, it'd go, boop, make a little snapping noise, and that would flash it like a little mini x-ray on the film of the patient's info. And then you would go take your film, run it in the dark room if you did the x-ray. Okay. Uh, it's just another thing that, they have, that was a headache, trying to avoid having that on your film. Headache? Can't you like take the patient's x-ray and then tag it? You could, but they always advise against that because we would always forget. Mm. <laughs> Especially if you're doing a lot of films. and you're Usually with film guys, you'd have one person taking the x-rays, one person looking in the dark room. So as you would take an x-ray, so let's say we're in an x-ray room here, guys. The dark room would be right next door, in between the rooms, and there'd be this little door right here. So I would take my x-ray, I would feed it through the door, I'd knock on the door, they would open it up, oh. and in the dark room and run the film while we're doing the next x-rays. Cool. So you'd always work in pairs like that. Now if you were by yourself, it made it slower because you would take all your x-rays, then you'd have to walk to the dark room, run each film, and wait for them to painfully come out. And let me tell you, when you're doing comps, talk about waiting for your execution. <laughs> like, it was like waiting on an execution. Like, time was going slow because you'd be watching that film come out like this. And, 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 and you're like, did I get it? Did I get it? Are my custom frame angles on there? And you can't tell until you put it on a light box anyway. You're sitting there trying to see, oh, is it on there? Is, is my marker on there? Oh, it was stressful.
On the processor? Yeah, but um, I don't know. Every every morning, each draws make sure there's liquid in there because there's no liquid. Extra For the water. processor, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So sometimes it would. Uh, Technology is amazing. We don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Yeah. What really is that tube? Hmm? The tube that was in the back of the head. The what now? Is there a drainage tube in that last patient? Yes, it's a shunt. That is a shunt. Okay. It's also a lot of motion. How about this one here, guys? PA skull. Is that even a PA skull? Mm. <laughs> we cut the top of the skull off. That's likely a mandible x-ray. What positioning error as well? They used to rethink their life because they didn't even get they uh, they did the wrong exam there. That's a PA mandible x-ray. Review question. What's the CR angle and direction for a PA axial called well of the cranium? 15 degrees called that, correct. You take a picture? Go ahead. <laughs> it's unreliable projector. Which baseline is positioned perpendicular to IR on the lateral projection of the cranium? I I be careful. We're doing a lateral projection of the cranium. What's perpendicular? Oh, Got some of y'all on that one. It's the interpupillary. Interpupillary because we're in a lateral. So the IOML would actually be parallel, yeah. parallel yeah. to the IR. If the IOML is positioned perpendicular to the IR for the AP axial town, what is the CR orientation? CR orientation, the central ray. Thirty-seven. For IOML. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. What would it be for OML? Thirty-seven. Very good. What projection and method are demonstrated on this white screen? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, it's testing me today. AP axial yes, AP axial town. Lord. You're trying to tell me something. All the way back today. Alright, get out your system, machine. Alright. Huh? Maybe that's the MRK was moved. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. I went way ahead there. What just <laughs> <here? laughs> Okay. Well, let's now <laughs> let's move on to facial bones. Yeah, should we start cold? It's not 59. It is not 59. <laughs> I have a phone right here. We're 20 minutes too early. Positioning of the facial bones and sinuses. Yeah. Got a test? Yeah. And I mean, it's not working. Like the computer is tripping. We'll go really fast on my day, like super fast. Well, let me, let me restart the computer. Okay, cool. Please. Let me, let me see if I can just get back to it. If it's not working, it's just another PowerPoint. Don't worry. Or just the rest of it. Oh, the rest of it. The rest of it. Maybe. Yeah. 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 When in doubt, just restart. Lines. Maybe. It's up to I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? Do you know on this last one how they got? What are you having test on? Vegas. Uh, I said it was an average, but when I calculated it, it's what's the subject? Or do you know on this one? Eight easy. That's an important one. to you guys in the study hall today. Okay, right in front of you. want to practice yeah. above an Austin, so. Okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.